Hi, I'm Rob from B&H, and in this video we're going to take a look at Avid's MBOX family of audio interfaces for the Mac and PC. Let's be clear on the nomenclature here, as this is the successor to the original MBOX and the MBOX 2, these new models are sometimes referred to as the MBOX 3 series, but Avid just calls them MBOXs. Either way, these are solidly built interfaces offering great sound and some smart features, and with three different models available, you can choose the one that best suits your budget and needs. While the MBOX family is an especially terrific fit for Pro Tools users, it works with many other DAW platforms, including Reason, Logic, Sonar, and many more. The three models available include the MBOX Mini, the middle version is simply called the MBOX, and the top of the line is called the MBOX Pro. Let's compare features, starting with the Mini and working our way up to the Pro. The MBOX Mini is the smallest and least expensive of the three. It connects to your computer via a USB 1.1 connection, which supplies power and delivers a maximum audio resolution of 24-bit, 48 kilohertz. The MBOX Mini gives you three physical inputs on the back of the box, but only two are available at once. So input one has two physical options, depending on what you're recording. Mic and line signals can be plugged into the combo XLR quarter inch jack with optional 48 volts phantom power, while the other option is for the DI input. You swap between the two with the mic line versus DI button right here. Input 2 offers no mic input and is switchable between DI and line. Note that the mic pre's and the converters on these new MBoxes are substantially better than what we've heard on previous MBox iterations. Also on the back are two balanced quarter inch outputs for monitors. On the front of the MBox Mini is a large rotary knob for the monitor volume, knobs for your input levels which can be pulled to engage the 20 dB pad, and a knob to control the blend between your input signal and playback from your DAW. The Mini offers no DSP monitor mixing. Also on the front is a mute button and a really nice sounding quarter inch headphone jack. Like all the new MBOX models, the buttons and knobs feel really great. I love the satisfying click you get when you pull the input gains to engage the pad. The middle size model, simply called the MBOX, takes things up a notch. On the MBOX, we've got a USB 2.0 connection, which allows us 24-bit, 96 kilohertz resolution. We also move up to four ins and four outs, a stereo analog and a stereo digital of each. There are two Hi-Z inputs on the front and two XLR quarter-inch mic line combo inputs on the back. Also on the back are our two quarter-inch monitor outs, SPDIF inputs and outputs, and MIDI in and out ports, something the MBOX Mini doesn't have. Returning to the front, we've got the large rotary volume knob, headphone volume knob, and gain knobs for the inputs, again with optional pads. We've also got switches to toggle between front and back inputs, as well as dim and mono buttons. The MBOX also has an excellent new feature we can engage, soft limiting, which is designed to limit very hot signals at the input stage to avoid clipping before the digital converter. Let's take a look. Here I've got a really hot signal coming in and yeah, it's clipping all right. But by engaging soft limit, voila, problem solved. Obviously, it's better to lower our input level if we're getting a lot of overages, but soft limiting lets us set a nice hot input level and if there's an occasional transient that pops out, it's under control. There's also a multi button here which you can tap or hold to give Avid's Pro Tools software certain commands. The default, if you press and release the button, is record, start, and stop, while pressing and holding adds a track, but you can select other options in the hardware setup page. In addition, with the MBOX, we get DSP monitor mixing, which allows us to set up cue mixes and send latency-free reverb or delay to our vocalist, and it even features a guitar tuner. Let's move on to the big daddy in the family, the MBOX Pro. Instead of a USB connection, the MBOX Pro uses a FireWire 400 connection, requires a 9 volts power supply, and offers resolutions up to a whopping 24-bit, 192 kilohertz. It will also give you 8 ins and 8 outs. Checking out the front of the box, in addition to the controls we saw in the MBOX and the MBOX Mini, now we see 4 rows of ladder style LED meters and 2 headphone outs with individual gain knobs. There are two combo quarter-inch XLR inputs on the front for mic and DI inputs. 
For line inputs for the first two channels, hit the rear input buttons and plug into the balanced quarter inch inputs in the back, where you'll also find buttons to set the levels at either plus four or minus 10, depending on your signal. Looking at the back, we see our two XLR mic inputs, the four balanced quarter inch line inputs, two RCA line ins, and our six quarter inch outputs. Another really smart touch on the Mbox Pro are these insert jacks. Here you can insert an analog effect like a compressor between the preamp and the A to D converter. With the Mbox Pro, it's easy to set up separate Q mixes for our players so they can get the blend they want. With two independent headphone outs, I can plug the singer's phones in headphone jack A and give him a lot of vocal with reverb in his monitor mix while the guitarist is monitoring a totally different mix with less vocal and more guitar from headphone jack B. Each of them gets more of themselves in the monitors and you get better performances from happy musicians. Having two separate headphone jacks means I don't have to sacrifice a pair of monitor outs for a second headphone mix, so I can still have three different sets of speakers to choose from for monitoring. The speaker source button then toggles between speakers and lights up a different color depending on which set I've selected. If you hold it down, it sources aux inputs 5 and 6, so you can easily monitor an external source. It's a handy way to quickly compare your mix to a reference mix from a CD or MP3 player. The button even blinks to let you know you're monitoring the aux inputs. Also on the back is a DB15 connection where you can plug in the included breakout cable for SPDIF, MIDI, and word clock connections. Finally, the Mbox Pro has a foot switch input on the back which you can use to start and stop playback or punch in and out of record with Pro Tools. So hopefully that gives you some idea of what Avid has on offer with their latest Mbox series. Three attractive and solidly built interfaces that deliver excellent sound and some slick controls. You can buy these interfaces alone or bundled with Avid's Pro Tools 9 software, which saves you a substantial amount over buying them separately. For more information on Avid's Mbox family or any of our other audio interfaces, visit us online, give us a call, or stop by our New York City Superstore. Thanks for watching.